And we could show them Vikings and they'd be like, no. <laughs> Not, no. A proper Vikings React channel. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Literal Vikings React. <laughs> to just everything. There's just yeah. It's just us filming them. <laughs> just <laughs> walking around the world. <laughs> Happy as a clam. Hey YouTube, welcome back to our channel. My name is Elena. And I'm Bjorn. And we are Viking Age reenactors and living historians here to talk with you about your favorite Viking shows. So this time around, we're going to be watching The Foreigners, which I've come to realize is very much just like a time-traveling buddy cop movie. And this is another show that's from Norway, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. There seems to be a lot of shows coming out of Norway nowadays with uh, a historical aspect to them and obviously being from Norway they're going to have something to do with Vikings. Yeah yeah this is, will be like the third show in that kind of installment in our series so far because we've yeah. had we've had uh, Norseman obviously and we had Ragnarok just now and now we're doing Beforeiner so mm -hmm. we'll see we'll see how this one differs from the rest. Yeah cool so we've been we've been planning for this one for a bit um, we've already checked out the trailer if you haven't seen it watch that if you guys have not seen the series yet yourselves, uh, you can find it on HBO. Uh, currently consists of six episodes. Uh, I believe there's only a single season of it. And we cannot wait to get into it. Imagine traveling forward through time, you have no idea where you are, and then a bunch of high schoolers are hauling you out of water. Just a bunch of, like, half-naked people. <laughs> just like, yeah, right? Just, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what would be the most, like, shocking, culturally speaking, for time travel. I don't know if it'd be, like, the setting. I feel like it'd be, like, the technology. And, yeah. Well, I mean, like, but I'm talking about, like, first glance. You know, just, like, mm -hmm. looking around and seeing, like, skyscrapers and stuff. Like, yeah, like, immediately lights and yeah. no stars in the sky. You're just like, what? I find that interesting that they actually thought about bringing in somebody that speaks Icelandic. Right. It's a pretty clever kind of jump to make because we always talk about like the similarity to the languages and stuff and um, you know because of Iceland's uh, like remoteness they're, they're slower to adapt or to, to change kind of because they don't have any any influence from the outside world. Or not so, a lot of it anyway. Exactly. I mean, they're going to naturally change and develop over time. And so because of that, a lot of people will say that um, Iceland is actually very close to Old Norse in the same sense that like English is close to like Shakespearean mm -hmm. or like an older English kind of thing where you can still kind of pick up instances and kind of understand. The sounds like you can recognize a little bit and it, it might be kind of difficult maybe, um, but you can still sort of get it a little bit. I don't really know how uh, how true that is because obviously I don't speak Icelandic or Old Norse, but this is what I've heard from from people who know what they're talking about, so yeah. I trust them. It's interesting because like uh, they played it off really well where he was just like, I don't fully understand this. But there was something about the past in there. Right. Which is exactly how it would happen, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I also am, like, thinking of this as, like, <laughs> just being a guy from here and, like, some Norwegian walking up and just hearing these people, like, n like just can't stop talking, won't slow down, and just, you know, this weird dialect of, like, must be Icelanders. <laughs> Crazy people. Oh, my God. <laughs> Seriously. Just in a, a quick aside, it's more than just like Vikings, right? It's like people from all over the place. Mm -hmm. So uh, some of these people might be screwed because back in the Dark Age and stuff, swimming was not an inherent skill that you have. I wonder if they're just going to find some of them floating afterwards. Yeah. Like, I think, um, I think Richard the Lionheart died from drowning in his armor and stuff. Because he, like, fell and couldn't get up and stuff. And also just, like, for a common person, if, if you're not, like, living a seafaring life, if you're not, like, a, a proper sailor, you don't know how to swim. I also wonder, like, for these people, what, are they just being plucked from, like, 
the middle of their lives, like they're in the middle of battle and all of a sudden they're in the middle of an ocean? Or did they just like die and appear here? Yeah. Is this sort of like an, not an afterlife for them, but like what were they doing right before? Yeah, I'm so excited to see like what kind of excuse they're going to give this. Oh, Fury's letter. Oh, wow, okay. Come so on, just, I want explanation. We're just jumping right into being like accustomed to it. Okay. Okay, so we got three distinct time periods then. So we have the three main eras that they're coming from is the like nineteenth century, the Viking Age, and then like the Stone Age. Those are very, very different areas. Um, obviously, nineteenth century people got a natural boost, natural advantage. Right. Than the Viking or the Stone Age. They're people. not traveling Holy as much. Holy crap. Yeah, not even a little bit. So we have it as like a recurring thing. It just kind of happens all throughout the year, like nonstop, basically, mm -hmm. all around the world. So it's kind of cool. It's not just like one instance and then everybody just has time to like adjust or whatever. It's like a constant reoccurring thing, mm -hmm. um, which definitely is, is crazy. But I'm sure they could get a lot of social workers from those different ages for the people who can adjust to help like... It's okay. That's very true. There is somebody from the Viking Age that is trying to preserve fish in the oh, vents yeah, of the 100%. building. Because, just, yeah. because they did that. They uh, would use uh, certain techniques to preserve fish. A lot of the times it would be um, digging holes in the ground um, for like the yeah, cold like, ground. Yeah, they keep it cold it. like a cellar or something. Yeah. Or yeah, oftentimes they like hang it or like leave it in like a dry area to, to exactly. dry out or to smoke or something. Exactly. So yeah, I imagine there's all kinds of health and safety violations going on in every apartment complex now. Jeez. They don't have like a roped off thing or nothing? Nope. Like a little detail? Just drop her on the sand. Just like a blanket. There you go. That's our Viking girl. So we already we already went over that in the trailer. But yeah, uh Yeah, the costuming there. Is yeah, not the great. Yeah, for whatever reason, because we've seen some other stuff and it I mean, we saw some flashes of, like, the kids, you know, mm -hmm. who are the Vikings and, and some other things. And, uh, like, some of the clothing has been pretty decent from what we saw briefly. Um, but again, like, with the armoring, you know, with the one guy who washed up with the leather thing on and, and now this with just the furs and gaudiness, I just, I, I'll never understand why yeah. it's necessary because it's not. It's really not, and it would be cheaper not to do it, I feel like. Fisherman's net? Well, she might have gotten stuck. <laughs> That's wicked funny. I love that. Wow. I love how they're sneaking in already. It's pretty great. <laughs> She's well adjusted. <laughs> How about the literal newest person who's been hired for <laughs> all of 20 minutes and this dude who works part time? Perfect! Perfect! With their powers combined. With our powers combined, we are one semi competent cop! <laughs> yes! I love the R's. Mm. So many rolling R's. So, I don't know Norwegian, obviously. Um, but. With that in mind, I also don't know if I'm just making this up or anything, but whatever Alfildr speaks, I feel like there's a lot of, like, R rolling. Yeah, she has, like, a little bit of a different it, dialect, I feel like. Yeah, there's, like, there's a significant difference where you can kind of pick it up, like, everything that she's saying, you can, like, really hear the R. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is, like, a little bit of, like, an Old Norse thing. Like, I think, I think Dr. Jackson Crawford talks about it a bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, their dialect and, and things. And when he recites Old Norse, when he, when he, um translates or speaks it it's it's got this very much of that rolling r sound so I, i'm curious if there's any norwegian uh watchers of the show out there if um if they 
can help explain it maybe. But yeah, I'm really curious about that to see if it's if they really like tried that hard to, you know, make the the difference known and and you know, between the the Vikings and the and yeah. the modern day folk. Oh, all the runic and everything. I love how they're like changing it all so they can figure it all out too. Hmm. Oh, it's great. <laughs> That's the dad, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah. that's the dad from Ragnarok. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. I like saw like the little perfect. I was like, he looks familiar. Yeah, he's got some ice tips going on. Huh? Yeah. I like it. Okay, go back he into got it. Himself a makeover. I'm sorry. Like she knows how guns work. She knows how a laptop works. I'm like, I'm still on that. <laughs> if she can shoot a gun, she can open up and plug in a laptop. Wait, do the police carry guns in Norway? I actually don't know. You know, I don't either. <laughs> my, Amer my American side is coming out. <laughs> Just assuming all law enforcement are like strapped. <laughs> no, because there are so many countries in the world where the police don't even carry guns. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I guess we're going to find out. I guess we're going to learn about Norwegian <laughs> culture some more. I can't wait. <laughs> I mean, yeah, dude. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Okay, there's so much going on with costuming right now. Oh my god. And a lot of it is very confusing. Oh, okay, yeah, there's that there's that girl. Yeah, so like we've seen some of these people from the from the trailers. And the thing is at this point, I can't tell who's supposed to be a Viking and who's supposed to be from the Stone Age. Yeah, and so it's very difficult. That's problematic. Like what we're seeing on the screen right now with these costumes looks great. Love it. Yeah. I like how she just like refused to put on her jumpsuit and it's just like wrapped around her shoulders. I mean, she's just having a hard time. <laughs> she's trying to figure out how any of that works. She's having a hard time. This scene aside, we saw like some, some other shots and I, I couldn't tell who's supposed to be from the Stone Age and who's supposed to be from the Viking Age. There was a lot. Yeah. What have you done? So, so with this, we're getting like a little bit of um, like some folklore and some mythology mixed into things. I, I'm sure it's not actually some monstrous sea demon, basically. Right. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. So according to to um, Old Vorod Saga, um, a half gufa is like this giant. It, it's basically just like a giant, terrible sea creature. That like disguises itself as like an island. Kind of reminds me of like whatever mythology talked about like the turtle with like the island city placed on its back. Yeah, I think I don't know exactly where that mythology comes from. I know in Russia it's definitely a thing. Yeah. But I don't know if it stems from Slavic mythology or not. Probably has its finger in a few different pies. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Probably has a has a foot in, in a couple of different cultures. <laughs> No shame. I don't know how, how historically true it is, but um, um, from some of the like experimental archaeology stuff with hands on history, um, they've actually talked about using like a, a moss, uh, uh, like a, a type of moss that's found in the Norwegian mountains as um, a form of like sanitation, whether it's um, to kind of like clean yourself or for like wounds mm -hmm. uh, or for the lady curse. <laughs> Yeah, it's one of those things that we'll probably never know exactly how they handled that, mm -hmm. uh, specifically because it's not written down anywhere, uh, and the closest that we'll get to it is um, sort of that hands-on history learning yeah. and the experimental archaeology that yeah. can sort of try to answer that question by being like, well, here is what they had available to them that we know. Exactly. What would they use? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Holy sh**! See, just the helmet is just the uh, item, but with the horns, it tells a story. <laughs> oh no no, two two of these are uh, from you know the real times, and the rest are uh, fantasy, or uh, my imagination. I think we're going to start seeing a lot oh. of actors that are just cross-contaminating these shows now. Oh, I'm so, I'm so <laughs> happy about it. And he's still playing a Viking. Great. <laughs> so great. 
Oh, it's a drug dealer too. I love it. Do me slick to half school by then. Men then Google it. Oh, there finds most of stuff on it. Don't talk so much. Go to full of things you share. For helt ut. Eh, av för det här är allt för tjockt. Så du tar med det du har om half school för så presenterar du för timme på mötet i morgon. Quick prediction. She's going to look dumb in front of everybody. But her research is going to eventually lead to them actually discovering what they saw. Probably, yeah. Yo! One, it is, it is absolutely bad. Like, yeah, you get yours, lady. Absolutely. I'm not gonna stand in your way. But just the difference, again, with the, with the culture shock. Um, you know, the world that we live in right now is very vastly different than the world of the Vikings. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, in this very ruddy, piggish, simplistic way of showing that, I mean, it's, it kind of wouldn't be that far from what we feel like would be the truth not necessarily just about like raping people just whenever you want to but i just mean of like the the brutality of living you know because we've we've come so far and because we've made all these kind of regulations and laws and everything like that like we've taken a, a far step to the side from what society and what life was like back in the viking age so we're definitely going to see some very well i mean if it's if it's trying to be true to form we should be seeing some very Rough and tumble people. I love that because uh, so the Havamal is um, known as the sayings of the wise one. It's basically Odin's wisdoms. Wisdoms, yeah, yeah written down. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> And now we have Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> Perfect. Got Vikings quoting Oprah. What could be better? <laughs> First thing I said when I saw those wounds was fishing nets. Mm -hmm. Is that not what I said? Yep. Yeah, so somebody really doesn't like these people coming over, so they're going out and fishing them out of the water and killing them. Yeah, who would have thought so. fishermen would have such a problem with people in the water? bastards see i thought that she might have just gotten tangled up in a net and through this you know drowned thrashing in it but yeah like they accidentally caught her or yeah. something yeah i yeah, was yeah. kind of thinking something along the same i mean i that's what you'd logically think i didn't necessarily because the, there's six episodes anyways this is a really cool show and i'm all about it i like where they're going with it i like that it's like kind of gritty but it's like uh it's got some real nice morality, and I like the culture clash, how they're representing it so far. It's very realistic, I feel like. I do feel like the undertone threat of this entire thing is going to be uh, immigration as it stands nowadays. Because, like, in the U.S., but also in Europe, there's a lot of cultural clash going on with immigration right now. I, I do feel like this is going to be very much uh, a narrative on that as well. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, that's that's where all things come from, is observations of modern living. I'm in it for the historical facts. <laughs> really, really interesting start. I like the way that they're going with this. I like the way that they're introducing history into the present through um, the way that these people seem to be assimilating or not into the current, you know, modern day culture. There are some people who are trying um, and others, you know, they're just kind of resorting to homelessness and, you know, kind of the different ways that people are, you know, maybe not choosing to live in this age, but... Like, able to eke out a living? Yeah. Able to survive? Yeah, I mean, they're yeah, yeah. they're adapting in, in the only way that's, like, available to them. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, and that mm -hmm. sucks. The main issue that I'm seeing with the show currently is the costuming when it comes to, you know, the Viking Age costumes, of yep. course. Uh, but aside from that, I really don't have a lot 
bad things to say about it. Yeah, you know, it's it's like, it's very good. yeah, it's a very heavily modernized show, obviously, because it takes place nowadays. Um, so the historical re- references we're going to see are going to be more like sprinkled in everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like the the narrative behind everything is is pretty well thought out. And again, for whatever reason, they always have difficulty with the costuming, and that's unfortunate. It's, it's more than unfortunate. Like, this is a Norwegian show. So, yeah, I'll never understand that. Get your costume together, guys. Just, it's not difficult. But, yeah, all, all of that aside, I think it's I think it's really cool. I like the that we can, e- even not being native speakers or anything, we can still kind of eke out some dialects here and there, which mm-hmm. is really nice. Um, and there is that, you know, differential between, you know, the, the Norse and, and, the, and the modern Norwegians mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, but, yeah, I, I really like the narrative. I like the this, this storyline for it. It's a really cool... To kind of like take like a shield maiden and make her like a cop, you know? I, I like that aspect of it too. It's kind of fun. One aspect of time travel that sometimes get brought gets brought up is if you're traveling forward in time, you also, on top of the time period that you're dropping into, you also have to account for where in space you're dropping into. Because the Earth is constantly moving, as is the solar system, as is everything else. So you have to account for where the Earth spe- and your specific spot is going to be in the solar system and where the solar system is going to be in the universe at that time. Y'all speak don't work. Ugh. <laughs> speak don't work. Your speak don't work. <laughs> Listen. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified of our future videos. And we will see you in the next one.